we will now look at continuous linear transformations. The word transformations could be replaced by mappings or uh, operators. So let V and W be non-linear spaces. Let T from V to W be a linear map. These are vector spaces, so we know what is meant by a linear map between vector spaces. So, T is a continuous linear map if T is continuous as a mapping between the topological spaces V and W. So, V and W being non-linear spaces have their norm topology. So, if T is a map which is continuous with respect to these topologies, then you say T is a continuous map and if it is an addition a linear map, you have a continuous linear map. Continuity is a local phenomenon, so you can also talk of continuous at a point or continuous and the function is uh, mapping is continuous on the space if it is continuous at every point. So we now have a very useful characterization of continuous linear mappings or transformations. So proposition, so let V and W be non-linear spaces. T from B to W a linear map. The following are equivalent. So TFAE means the following are equivalent. 1. T is continuous. That means it is continuous at all points. 2. T is continuous at the origin. 3. There exists a constant k positive such that for all x in V, we have norm Tx is less than or equal to k times norm x. So, since we are dealing with two spaces, let us specify the norms where, where the norms are. So, norm x here is in V and the norm Tx here is the norm in W. Four, if B equals set of all X in V such that norm X is less than or equal to 1. So, this is called the closed unit ball. Then then T of B is bounded. What do we mean by a bounded set? A bounded set is something which is contained inside a ball. That means we have a, a, a constant such that norm of Tx is less than or equal to a constant for all x in B. Then you say that it is a bounded set. So, so let us prove this proposition. So proof. So 1 implies an implied by 2. So if t is continuous, obviously t is continuous at 0. So 1 implies 2 is obvious. What about 2 implies 1? So let t be continuous at 0. Let x belong to b. Then x let 
since we are in a metric topology, continuity can be studied via sequences. So, let x n converge to x, then x n minus x goes to 0, t is continuous at 0. So, t of x n minus x goes to 0, that is by linearity t of x n goes to t of x. So, t is continuous at x for all x and b. So, this implies that 1 and 2 are completely equivalent. So, now let us show that 2 is equivalent to 3. So, if 2 is true that is you have continuity at the origin, let us look at the epsilon delta definition. Take epsilon equal to 1, then there exists a delta such that norm x in v less than delta implies norm of t x in w is less than 1. So, this is the definition epsilon delta definition of continuity at the origin because we are taking x minus 0 that is x and t x minus t of 0 is again 0 and therefore, there is this norm of t x equal is less than 1. Now, let x belong to v be arbitrary and look at the vector delta by 2 norm x times x. Then what is the norm of this? Norm of this vector is delta by 2 which is strictly less than delta, uh, delta and therefore, norm of t of this, so this is in v, norm of t of this is going to be less than 1. So, that will be by linearity all the constants will come out delta by 2 into 1 over norm x v norm t x in w is going to be less than 1 which means that norm t x in w is less than 2 by delta times norm x in v. And so, you can take this as the constant which you like. Conversely, if norm t x in w is less than or equal to k times norm x in v, then x n going to 0 automatically implies that t x n goes to 0 and therefore, you have continuity at the origin. So, this shows that 2 implies 3. So, now let us prove that 3 and 4 are equivalent. So, b is the unit ball. So, if norm x is less than or equal to 1, then by the inequality we have norm t x is less than or equal to k. So, this means that t b is bounded. Conversely, let t b be bounded that means norm x less than or equal to 1 implies that norm t x is less than or equal to k. Then for any x in v, you look at x by norm x. This is norm is 1. So, norm of t of this is less than or equal to k and this implies that norm t x in w is less than or equal to, so this is v here, k times norm x v. So, this shows that all these conditions are equivalent to each other. So, this proves this theorem or proposition. Now, because from this third condition namely the unit closed unit ball is mapped to a bounded set, we can immediately see that every bounded set is mapped to a bounded set by t. Therefore, continuous linear transformations are also called bounded linear transformations. So, continuous linear transformation or map is the same as bounded linear map. That is, it takes bounded sets are mapped
to bounded sets. Now we Because it takes bounded sets to bounded set, I am going to make a definition now. So, with some foresight, I am going to give it, call it norm of t. So, norm of t is definition, supremum of norm tx in w for all norm x in v less than or equal to. So, we are going to study this and we will eventually show that this in fact defines a norm on the space of all continuous linear transformations. We have to first check that that is a vector space, we will do all of that. Okay. So, I am going to make this step. So, definition is norm of t is supremum norm of t x over uh, in w for all norm x less than or equal to 1. Okay, because this is well defined because you know that t of b is a bounded set. So, we have another proposition which allows us to calculate the norm of t in various ways. So, norm of t is nothing but the supremum of norm of t of t x in w for all norm x v equal to 1. So, we are going to take the supremum over a much smaller set. This is also equal to uh, supremum norm of t x in w by norm x in v x not equal to 0 x in v. So, you take all such ratios that supremum is also. Then this is also equal to infimum of all k such that norm t x in w is less than or equal to k times norm x v for all x in v. So, we saw that if t is continuous then such inequalities exist, such case exists. So, we take the smallest possible such k and then that is also will also turn out to be norm of t. So, let us prove these things. So, I am going to call this number as alpha call this number as beta and call this number as gamma. So, we have to show that norm t equals alpha equals beta equals gamma. So, proof. First of all, norm t is a supremum taken over norm x less than or equal to 1 and alpha is just norm supremum of the same thing taken over norm x equal to 1. So, this is a much smaller set. So, you have to really that norm t is greater than or equal to alpha. Now, you look at these two sets, norm t x over norm x equal to 1 can be written as norm t x by norm x because that is, so every candidate here is a member here. Conversely, if you take any such ratio norm of t x by norm x, this is not nothing but norm of t of x by norm x by linearity and x by norm x is of norm 1. So, every candidate here is also a member here. So, these two sets are in fact equal, therefore, the suprema are also equal and therefore, alpha equal to beta. Now, since you have beta is a supremum, you get that norm t x w is less than or equal to beta times norm x v by definition and therefore, beta is one of the k in this set here and therefore, it should be bigger than the infimum. So, beta is greater than or equal to gamma. On the other hand, if you have any k here, then norm t x by norm x is less than or equal to k and therefore, the supremum will also be less than or equal to k. That means, beta is less than or equal to k. If beta is less than or equal to k for every such k, then beta is less than or equal to infimum. So, beta is less than or equal to k for all k and this implies that beta is less than or equal to gamma which is the infimum. So, in fact, this beta is greater than or equal to gamma, it is also less than or equal to gamma. So, beta has to be equal to gamma. 
Finally, we so so now you take set of all x such that norm x is less than or equal to one. Then norm t x is less than or equal to k times norm x, or norm t x is less than or equal to k. This means that the supremum over all elements in the unit ball that is also less than or equal to k that means norm t is less than or equal to k and this is true for every k therefore norm t. So the same way we have norm t less than or equal to k for all k this implies that norm t is less than or equal to the infimum which is gamma and therefore gamma is greater than or equal to norm t. So we have a nice sandwich here we have norm t on either end norm t begin equal to alpha begin equal to be equal to beta equal to gamma begin equal to norm t and therefore norm t is equal to all these quantities. So that gives you the proof of this theorem. So now let us take this further. So in particular we saw that norm t x is less than equal to beta times norm x v therefore we have that if t is a bounded linear transformation we have that norm t x in w is less than or equal to norm t times norm x in w. It is a very important very useful inequality which we will. So moment we know a continuous linear transformation we have norm t x is less than or equal to norm t times norm x. Further if you have a linear transformation and you can show that norm t x w is less than or equal to some k times norm x v then it automatically means that t is continuous at the origin or uh, even by one of the first con three conditions which we proved in the first proposition t is continuous and of course we have that norm t is less than or equal to k. So whenever we produce such an inequality we have this estimate for the norm. So it is good to remember these two things. So now let us define L of Vw equals set of all t from V to W t continuous linear. And I am going to define t1 plus t2 as x as t1x plus t2x and then alpha t of x as alpha times t of x. So this is for all x in V and then alpha is in the base field which for me is R or let it be C it does not matter. Okay. Now clearly if t is in LVW this implies that alpha t is in LVW. There is no difficulty about that because you are just multiplying by a number alpha and therefore the continuity property does not change. But what about the sum? So if t1, so let us take norm of t1 plus t2x in w that is t1x plus t2x. So by the triangle inequality that is norm t1x in w plus norm t2x in w and that is we have just seen norm t1 plus norm t2 times norm x. So we have produced an inequality of this fine. So this implies that t1 plus t2 is also in LVW. So the space is closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication. So it is a vector space and we have also shown from this inequality that norm of t1 plus t2 <coughs> is less than or equal to norm t1 plus norm t2. This proves the triangle inequality. It is absolutely trivial to check the other things. Therefore norm t is defines a norm on LVW. So LVW has a natural 
non-linear space structure on it. So you take the set of all continuous linear maps, you also get a non-linear space out of it. Now we can go a little further. If W is complete, so is LV double. So, so note the importance here. We are not saying anything about B. B is just a non-linear space. If W is a complete non-linear space, that is a Banach space, then LVW automatically becomes complete. So let us check that. So we have to show that every Cauchy sequence converges. So Tn is a Cauchy sequence in LBW. What does it mean? So given epsilon positive, there exists a capital N such that for all N M greater than or equal to capital N, we have norm T N minus T M is less than epsilon. So, but what do you know? So norm of T N X minus T M X is less than or equal to norm Tn minus Tm times norm x. So for every x in V, I am no longer writing V and W subscript. You can keep them if you like. But I think now from the context, you can understand in what space we are working. So, so this is V of course and this is W. If I forget it, please remember. Okay. So this for every x in V, this implies that Tnx is Cauchy. Now Tnx belongs to W, so it's Cauchy in W, and therefore, since W is complete, we, it converges. Therefore, define Tfx limit n tending to infinity of Tn of x. Then clearly, T is linear. No problem. So we are. So we now have a candidate for the limit. So again, as usual, we have to check the eligibility of this candidate. So we want to show is T a member of LVW? First question. Second question norm Tn minus T does it go to 0? So these are the two questions which we want to answer. So the first thing is every Cauchy sequence is bounded. That means norm Tn because it is Cauchy is less than or equal to some constant. Therefore, for every x we have norm Tn x is less than or equal to norm Tn norm x which is less than or equal to C times norm x in B. Now, let n tend to infinity, norm is a continuous function, we have proved this in the first class, therefore norm Tx in W is less than or equal to C times norm X in B. And this implies that T is continuous, so T belongs to L V W. Next we go back to the uh, Cauchy condition. So for all x in V with norm x less than or equal to 1, we have that norm Tn x minus Tm x is less than or equal to norm Tn minus Tm times norm x. Norm Tn minus Tm is less than epsilon, norm x is less than or equal to 1, so this is less than epsilon. Now keep n fixed, so this is mn greater than or equal to n. So you fix n bigger than n fixed, m tends to infinity, and therefore you have norm Tn x minus Tx is less than or equal to epsilon for all norm x less than or equal to 1. And by definition of the norm, the supremum overall over the unit ball is the norm. Therefore, norm Tn minus T 
is less than or equal to epsilon for all n greater or equal to n that is Tn converges to T in LBW. So every Cauchy sequence does converge and therefore if W is complete then uh, LBW is also complete. There are two important cases. So first case is when V equals W. So then you have the space LVV. So it is silly to write V two times. So we will, so we will notation, we will only write LV. So if V is Banach, then LV is also Banach. So you have uh, the space of continuous linear operators. If the space is the same V equals W, generally we use the word operator. Well, it's interchangeable with mapping or uh, transformation as I already said, but this is a space of bounded linear operators. So then the second one is very important. So if V W equals R or C if that is the base field, then we have L V R or L V C and this we call as V star. This is the space of continuous linear functionals. Whenever we have a mapping into the base field, we call it a functional. So this is a continuous linear mapping into the base field and therefore this is the space of continuous linear functionals and it is called the dual space of V. And it is always complete. Whatever may be V because R is complete. So by the previous whatever we saw just now, the dual space is always a Banach space. So dual spaces and it's one of the important areas of research in um, functional analysis is to compute the dual of a given space. Given a space you would like to know what is the space of all continuous linear functionals because we will see later information, the more information you have on the dual, you will also have information on the base space. So this is a very important thing. Okay, so we have done, uh, so now let us 